In this video, I'm going to go through um, how you find the general formula for cubic sequences. Um, and if you're familiar with linear sequences and quadratic sequences, it's important to uh, get that background knowledge before we start with cubic sequences. So make sure you understand those first. Um, so for cubic sequences, we're looking at the third difference. So if you've noticed that the first difference R is not constant, the second difference is not constant, and if the third difference is constant, then you have what we call a cubic function. So we'll start with just um, subtracting the values here and just continuing through. So this is 14 and then 38 and then 54. I have 74 here. Um, I don't have a difference here, so it's not a linear sequence or it's not an arithmetic sequence. Um, so I'm going to go with another difference. I have 24. This goes on. Um, and then I have 36. If I had more terms, it would be a bit more obvious that we have a constant sequence. Um, we have 12 in this case. Um, ideally, you, ha you would have... Um, five terms and so you're able to know that you'll get another say 12 here um, in an exam you would get as such so anyway so we get a constant um, third term and what you do with this term unlike the quadratic sequence and quadratic sequences we divided this constant term by two for cubic sequences you divide them by 6. Um, and in this whole video I'm not going to go through the technicalities of why so it's kind of just blindly fall through for now. Um, so we're going to take this value and we're going to divide it by 6. So in this case I'm going to get a2. And then it means that my beginning now, the beginning of my term will be 2n cubed. So the goal of doing this is to know what the coefficient of n cubed is going to be. If it was 6, then I'm doing 6 divided by 6 and it's 1, and so my coefficient would have been n cubed uh, 1 only, so we'd have n cubed only. So this is the first starting point. Next what we do is we create a table. So I'm going to create a table with the n term in the beginning. And then I'm going to write my terms. And then I'm going to write my 2 and cubed. So what we got. Um, the n is just the position of your numbers. So we have, in this case, um, it always starts with 1, 2, 3, 4. We only have four terms anyways. And then your terms are your numbers here, the original numbers. So 2, 16, um, 54 and 128. Um, then you start calculating this, but then the n you substitute has to come from here. So you have two brackets, one cubed. Um, so this will be two. Then you have two bracket, two cubed, um, and so on. You continue as such with all the values. You keep on changing the n. Um, and you notice that you get the same exact numbers. The last row, this is quite obvious, we don't have to, but the last row will be the terms minus 2 and cubed, so row 2 and then minus row 3. Uh, you subtract them from each other and what we get is a 0. So this is a common difference. And whatever, if you got the same number here, that's what you add on top of what you got in the beginning. In this case, it's zero, which means our nth term formula is 2n cubed. Um, so that's the easy case for now. Um, what if we get um, something slightly different? So say... Um, a different sequence, let's say we start with um, negative 7, 0, 
and let me add just enough terms this time and we have 117 so um continuing with the same process so say um we take the first difference so i have um, zero minus negative seven seven and then i have 19 here i have 37 and 61 and then I take another difference 12 18 and 24 and that is again not enough so I take another difference so I get a 6 and a 6 again so the third difference here and then as we said you take the difference and you divide it by six so in this case i have six divided by six which is one so this will be the coefficient of my n cubed so in this case it's just one so using using this i'm going to create my table i have my n my terms my n cube which i got from here and then the subtraction So the terms are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, the numbers are 7, 0, 19, 56, and 117. And then I'll start to cube my numbers, taking them from here. So 1 cubed is 1, 8, 27, 64, and 125. And then I'll start subtracting the terms minus this. So um, we get a negative 8, negative 8, should be a negative 8 everywhere. So the position matters, the sign matters. So in this case, I get a common difference of negative 8, and it's a linear term. So my final nth term formula is n cubed minus 8. Now, if the common difference at the end so if the so this is a side note um, if the common difference was so they subtract um, terms um, whatever you get here is whatever you're going to add on top of or in front of your n cubed here so if it was a linear sequence so something of a common difference and then you're just going to add this common difference if if the subtraction ended up being something like 2 4 6 8 10 then you know that this is a linear um, sequence of 2n so that's what you're getting every single time um, which means that you have to do n cubed plus 2n instead so whatever you add here is the formula for this term um, if it's a constant term you just add it if it's a linear arithmetic sequence you put that arithmetic sequence um, if it's a cubic se uh, quadratic sequence you add it in there so you have to be aware about what the subtraction is and this is something that's covered in the quadratics video if you haven't seen it yet